Hello everyone. I am with you again with the legend of the worst boy in the world. Here it goes. Chapter 1. It's not fair. I have four brothers and they are always complaining about something. If I ever have a problem and I go to my mom to talk about it, there are generally at least two brothers in the queue before me, moaning about something totally stupid. I could have an actual real problem like a hangnail or a missing sock and there they are wasting mom's time with silly stuff like jam on their faces or back to front jumpers. My four brothers have their favorite problems that they like to moan about at least once a day. Mom calls these problems their hobby horses. Whenever they start winging on about them, dad makes horsey noises and a here we go again face. But mom listens anyway because she's our mom. Marty is the oldest brother and his hobby horse is that he is never allowed to do anything and he might as well be in prison. Why can't I have a motorbike? He often whines. I'm 10 now and that's nearly 16. If I had a helmet on, the police would never notice. Or another one is, why can't I have a full-sized snooker table in the garage? It's only full of old tools and a car, nothing important. I'll pay for the snooker table as soon as I become a famous football player. Dad sometimes comes into a room just to hear Marty complain about something. He says that Marty is far more entertaining than any television show. Snooker table, Dad chuckles. Marty, my boy, you are cracking me up. This is not what Marty wants to hear. So he storms off, sulking. Once, when Marty came back after storming off, Dad presented him with a cardboard Oscar for Best Actor. My name is Will and I'm the next in line. After me comes my second brother, Tony, whose hobby horse is his hair. No matter how often mum washes or combs it, there's always something wrong. It's sticking up at the back, mum. So mum flattens the back. Now, Tony, off you go. It's still sticking up, mum. No, it isn't. You're having hair hallucinations, Tony. Go on now. You'll be late for school. I can see a hair sticking up. It's definitely there. The girls will see and I'll get a nickname. Sticky up, Woodman. They'll call me. It'll be horrible. And so... Mum gets out a water bottle and sprays Donnie's head. Better? I suppose. This happens every second day. On the other days, Tony wants his hair to stick up because he thinks it's cool. Brothers 3 and 4, Bert and HP, have invented brand new words so that they can wing more efficiently. Bert's new word is canewa, as in canewa bar of chocolate. Not before your dinner, honey, says mum. Canewa square, just one square. No, honey, dinner's on the way. Canewa bag of chips then? I think you're missing the point, Bert. No sweets or crisps before your dinner. Canava throat sweet. Throat sweets are still sweets, honey. Mum has great patience. Dad only puts up with two canavas before he gets annoyed. HB 
That's half pint is the youngest and hates being the baby. The word he invented to complain about this is snuffer, as in snuffer. Chrissy's mummy allowed him to get his head shaved. Now he looks at least five and a half. He said this one afternoon after his half day in baby infants. I'm not in charge of Chrissy, said mum. I'm only in charge of you. And I say no head shaving. Snowfair howled HP. Barry has a stick on tattoo like the big boys. No stick on tattoo. We've talked about this. Snowfair muttered HP. Then what about an earring then? Loads of people have those. Snowfair that I don't have one. Life's not fair sometimes, said mum and hugs HP until he starts sucking his thumb. Two minutes later, he's fast asleep. Sometimes HP talks in his sleep. Guess what he says? All this complaining means that by the time Marty and I get home from school with the troubles, there is usually a little brother perched on each of mom's knees, moaning about their baby problems. And even if miracle of miracles, there is a free me. Mum is usually on autonod by then anyway. Autonod is when grown-ups don't really listen to what a child says. They just nod every five seconds or so until the child goes away. So Marty and I decided that we had to target another grown-up to talk to about our problems. Dad was the next target. But sometimes he works so late that we don't even see him before bedtime. Marty reckoned that dad only had time for one set of complaints and that set should be his. So I had to pick someone else. Somebody who was a good listener and had a lot of spare time. I knew just the person. Grand dad.